Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of American Reloader. Um, if it's your first time visiting the channel, go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button so you guys can watch further content when it drops. Um, as I said in the first video that I made, the first video was all about basically, you know, you know, reloading 101, the basics, you know, of getting into reloading and whatnot. And I said that I would be dropping a video soon on reloading the first actual cartridge. And that cartridge is going to be, you guessed it, 38 Special. Um, it's, it's, you know, a pretty simple cartridge to reload, guys. Um, it's not complicated. I'm not really going to go into the history of the cartridge itself, but... Um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and get on with it. So as always, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to reload this cartridge from basically start to finish. I'm going to show you guys everything from the steps of uh, brass cleaning to, uh, seating projectile, you know, getting the powder in the, uh, you know, the casing and all that stuff. Um, so I am doing this with my cell phone, so I apologize if it's kind of squirrely. I know I'm trying to do the best I can until I get some other equipment. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So basically, as I said before, you know, you're going to have your, your basic components of a cartridge. You know, you got your, your projectile, you got your brass, and then you're going to have your powder and all that good stuff. So I'll go over here. This is brass. Now, I'm not going to show you guys the tumbling process of the brass because it takes a couple hours. But basically what you do is is this is your vibratory tumbler and as I said before there's multiple ways you guys can clean brass if you want to clean your brass uh, like I said you don't have to but it definitely you know I like shiny brass and other people might argue that you might say it's a waste of time but basically you're going to take your brass like this your brass is going to come in a raw form whether that's once fired and it'll be a little bit dirty or you can get it brand new I know this is kind of hard to see because it's white but you get a brand new in this case it's Winchester 38 special 100 each uh, I've already reloaded these, but it's just an example. Uh, so basically, you're going to take your brass, once fire, new, whatever the case is, you're going to throw it in there. You're going to, you know, press on the power button, whatever, and that's going to, you know, vibrate for a couple hours or 12 hours, whatever the case may be. It's going to come out and it's going to look like something like this. It's going to be all nice and shiny and pretty looking. And then you're going to take that brass. And the next step I like to do, especially if it's once fired, I'm going to put the camera like this so you guys can see what I'm doing here, is you're going to clean it out. You, you know, first off, you need to check your brass, make sure it's actually fireable. You know, you're checking for cracks, uh, cracks in the casing, do a good visual inspection on this case. This was once fired, as you can see, and that's inside there. You can see the carbon. But you're going to check the primer pocket, and you want to clean the primer pocket too. And I have... A RCBS primer pocket cleaner basically it's got like little needle things on it or whatever and you're gonna take the primer the primer pocket here and you shove this thing in here and give it a nice little twist all right make sure that primer pocket is nice and clean and the reason why you guys want to do this uh, I guess you don't have to do it but I would highly recommend it, especially if you're loading like defensive rounds it just basically lessens the risk of, you know, your powder not igniting uh, equally and uh, as efficiently as possible, you know, without having a dirty primer pocket. But now that that's done, we'll use this one casing as an example. I'm only going to load one, guys, because obviously if you load one, you're going to know how to do the rest. You're going to take this raw casing right here. Move this camera out of the way. All right, so now that you got your one casing, okay, we'll come over here. Place it right there. All right, now this is the Hornady single stage press. As I said before, this is a great press. And then we'll go ahead up here. We'll get our die set. And this is one of the other things I said you guys need when you reload. In this case, 38 special. So we're gonna grab this guy right here. What the? Bring it up here. All right. So when you guys open this this uh, um die set up, you're gonna have three. You'll have three separate uh, uh dies in here, right? You'll have, what is this? Okay, so that's your, your belling dies. It basically bells out the mouth of the casing to accept the projectile. You're going to have your seating die. That's obviously what's going to seat the projectile in the casing. And then you're going to have your resizing and decapping die. Basically what that's going to do, that's going to resize your factory casing back to factory spec. And it's going to punch out that once fired uh, primer on the ground. That way you guys can load up a new primer. And so what we'll do 
is we'll go ahead and shove this guy inside the press here. Show you guys how this push down, twist, boom, done. And that's why I like Hornady's uh, lock and load press is it's really easy to uh, change out die sets when you need to. All right, so now that that's in there, and another thing I told you guys that you will need is a shell holder. Okay, this is very important. All right, this is what you're going to need to hold that brass inside here to go in there. Okay, that is a must-have. You cannot reload without one of these little guys. Uh, you can find them anywhere. I got a couple of them up here. They sell them at Bass Pro for, I don't know, like seven bucks or something like that. But you can take this shell holder like this, bring the press up like that, and you see that little little slot right there? You're going to see that little slot right there, and you're gonna basically going to push that in there like that. Really easy, guys. All right, so we got our casing right here. Now, I did say that you're going to want to lube these cases, you know, you're, you're going to want to do that. If not, you're going to get that this casing stuck in that press, guys. And that is a that is that's going to be a bad day. Uh, all you guys, you seasoned reloaders out there, you know what I'm talking about. You know, we've all done it. It is what it is. Just make sure you guys lube up your casings. Uh, in this case, I'm using one of these one shot case lubricant. It's pretty good. It's not bad. It's it kind of stinks when you're inside. It is, you know, but whatever. Uh, believe it or not, you can actually use Pam too. I know that sounds funny, but uh, I've done it and I've used it and it's kind of cheaper. But what I'll do is um, I'm trying to do this one hand, so it's kind of difficult. Oop. I'm going to put this on the table over here. I'm just going to spray this thing down real quick and shake that up. And... Normally, I wouldn't put this much lubricant on the casing, guys, but you know, I'm doing this one handed. So, all right, so let me twist this around. Actually, we'll go over here. All right, so you're going to take this casing and you're going to see the bottom end of the casing. It's going to have that rim on it, kind of, and you'll be able to slide that into here. And it's going to work just like this. Boom, done. Okay, now that the casing is in the shell holder, we can go ahead and do our upstroke of our press. Now, you're going to feel some resistance initially when you guys do this. Obviously, you're going to go up like so. Okay, cool. So if that had a fired, once fired primer in there, that decapper would have punched out that primer and it ended up in the used primer tray. But so I went ahead and resized it. Boom, done. So we're going to change this bad boy out. Twist, pull up. Awesome. Put it back in the case. Now we're going to get the belling, the uh, case belling die. And once again, you're just going to drop in, twist, it locks in. And as I said before, this is going to open up the mouth of the case. And that is going to allow you to put the projectile in there to be seated down. Um, if you try to put, I'll show you an example. By the way, I'm using for projectiles, I am using 158 grain FP XT or XTP. Sorry. Um, this isn't really an ideal projectile 438 special because it is so heavy but you guys you, you can use it and believe it or not i have actually had good um surprisingly good results with it i'll explain that in a minute but the reason why you guys are going to want to bell the mouth of this casing or why it's basically required for pistol calibers is because this one hasn't been billed yet and if you go to try to stick that down in there it's it's not really going to you see, it's not really going to hold in there too well. And if you do that and you go to smash it in the press, you're going to squish the casing. So there's a reason why we do that. So we'll go back over here. Get that projectile down. So we'll need that later. Bam. All right. So we're going to stick the casing back in there. We're going to go ahead and bell out that mouth of the casing. We want the upstroke here nice and gently. You guys don't want to go too hard on the press here. Boom. Not a lot of pressure. Okay, now, get that in there. It's kind of stuck. Okay, now we flared or belled, whatever you want to say, the mouth of the case. Now that projectile is actually going to sit in there a lot easier, and you guys will see what I'm talking about here. Boom. Whoops. And you'll be able to actually freely stand the projectile inside the casing like that when it's properly, uh, it's properly belled out. So now that we got that done, now 
you can actually go ahead and prime. All right, so. Um, okay. So now we can go ahead and prime, and there's two different ways you can prime on the single stage press. One is on the press itself, and that's going to be that little guy right there. That's like a little primer cup. You can stick the primer in there and basically on the upstroke, gently seat it into the casing. Or you can use the Hornady or whatever manufacturer you prefer hand priming tool. This, guys, will absolutely save you some time. It's faster. It's better. Uh, yeah, it might give your hand a little bit of a cramp, but you can knock out a thousand cases an hour if you're like watching a movie or something. That's usually what I do. It's pretty efficient. But, you know, for today and you know today's example of this single 38 special cartridge we're going to go ahead and do it on the single stage press so primers let's talk primers as i said before you're going to have different primers you're going to have large primers you're going to have small pistol primers you know in this case primers are kind of low it is what it is you know with the whole crap, crap going on with the pandemic and politics and all that primers are getting hard to find so beggars really can't be choosers as far as brand but in this case, I'm going to be using small Magnum pistol primers. And I know some of you guys are out there like, why are you using Magnum primers on 38 Special? It's like not necessary. Well, it works. It You know, it's fine. You can use small Magnum pistol primers on like 38 Special. Um, you know, it's, it's not bad. So, like I said, they come in different sizes, boxes, uh, brands. In this case, I'm using Federal. You know, you got Winchester and you got CCI and all that. Those are really the well-known ones. So we'll go ahead and open up this box. Get out some Magnum primers. We only need one, though. Now, let me set this down. Oh, actually, no. God, this is so hard to do with one hand, guys. <laughs> really need a cameraman. All right, so... Actually, I might have used all these. Oh, crap, I did. All right, so that was empty. Sorry. Let me, probably should have shook it first, huh? Okay, so this one's got primers in it. So we got Magnum pistol primers. We're gonna go ahead and slide that open, and usually they're gonna look kind of like that, you know. And packaging's a little bit different. This, you know, shout out to Federal for some great packaging on their Magnum primers. They really do a good job as far as packaging their products. Usually it's pretty good. So we'll go ahead and get out one of these little bad boys. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and dump a few of them just because it's easier that way with one hand. All right, so we got a few of these little primers here. So we got one primer. All right, so it looks like that. All right, we got our casing. So you're gonna set the press about like that, and you're gonna want to put this primer with the the flat silver end or you know gold end, whatever brass end, whatever the case may be. You're gonna want to set that facing down, okay? And the reason why you want to do that is because primers are obviously directional. You have to put them in one way or they will not work. And if you do it wrong, you could really screw something up and you'll know it too. Uh, so basically you want to put this primer, you know, down in the cup here. You know, see it down in the cup, face down like that. And it's going to look like that in there. Okay. And that's what the, basically the business end of a primer looks like. It's like a little triangle with some, you know, some primer, uh, whatever you want to call it in there, really the official name of it. But anyways, you want to shove that casing back in there. And this is how you do it with that in there. You guys don't put a lot of pressure on this. Okay. You don't really need to, you will feel it seat. So basically you're going to push up. Okay. And you're going to feel it stop. And then you're just going to push a little bit beyond that. And that's it. Okay. You're going to bring it up a little bit so you can get that casing out of there. Pull it out, and you are primed. You are ready to go. You are ready for powder in a projectile. Okay, so now that we are primed, let's go over to our handy-dandy book for our powder. Bam. Oh, by the way, we can go ahead and remove this die. Plop that in there. Bam. Let's get out our seating die. We'll stick that in there. Push down, twist. We're locked in. Let's go ahead and put this back up on the die shelf all right now this is what you guys are going to need next this is what i told you guys was literally the most important piece of equipment in your entire collection of reloading crap is your manual this is what's going to tell you how much powder and what kind of powder you need to be putting inside here all right so 
As I said before, this thing's pretty important. It's going to tell you everything you need to know about reloading. Oh yeah, this is, I forgot it's a white book, so it's really, really freaking bright. Okay, now you can't really see that well. All right, so, for example, you're going to go to your table of contents. You're going to find your caliber, and you're going to flip through your pages. And let's see, hang on, let me off camera a little bit here. 38 Special. Doo -doo -doo. By the way, I don't know if we'll give you guys a actual tour of the bench here. This is the bench that I have. It's pretty nice. It, you know, you're going to need a bench when you reload. You don't need, no, obviously, nothing this big. I started out on this little stack-on metal bench here. I bought off Amazon for like a couple hundred bucks. It did its job for a while, but I wanted to upgrade. So I had this thing built, and it is awesome, guys. I put in some lights myself for adequate lighting. You're going to need that. But anyways, back to it. Sorry. So, all right. So yeah, you're gonna find your your cartridge in here. You know your projectile and your powder. And actually, you're not always gonna find it in here, guys. Because Hornady is primarily gonna, you know, they're they're gonna market their their projectiles usually in here. Um, and actually, the load that I'm doing with this 38 special is actually not in this book, but. You can find other information online and in other books. Um, but for, you know, instruction purposes only, I just got that out to show you guys that basically have this on standby and ready to go. Um, so let's talk powder. Uh, like I said before, you got different pistol powders, you know, for what you guys are going to reload. In this case, some of you guys might hate, but I really don't care. I am using Shooter's World. Okay. Shooter's World Ultimate Pistol. Okay, this is, it's cheaper powder, you know, your typical pound of powder is going to cost you anywhere from, you know, 25 bucks up to, you know, 36 bucks a pound. You could buy an eight pound jug, so you're obviously like anywhere from 159 to 225 for eight pounds. Um, this stuff's a little cheaper, but guys, it shoots really good. It shoots pretty clean. Um, I've never had any problems with it. I mean, I probably fired a couple thousand rounds of, you know, this brand of powder, and I actually have not had any issues as far as, um you know, regularly or, or, you know, quality control issues with the powder. And so you're going to take your powder, right? And as I've said before, if you want to measure your powder inside your cartridge, you can do it a couple ways. You can use a electronic scale. In this case, I got the Hornady GS, what is that? 1500 scale. Um, yeah, it's an average scale. It's not too bad. Or you can use your powder measure. Uh, now keep, as I said before about the powder measure guys, this is not the most accurate thing in the world. It'll, you know, you're going to have a, a variance in, in powder level, powder level, sorry, in your cartridge. That's okay. Um, this is for plinking purposes only, or this is going to be just one round that I plink with. Normally I don't do this, but you'll take your powder. It'll come in a little one pound thing like this. You can open it up, which I can't do because it's one hand, of course. Anyways. You take that like that, you're going to unscrew it, and you're going to pull up this little whoop, black boot here. And as you can see, I've actually already got some in there. And you're going to ch -ch -ch dump it in. And I will show you how to set this thing up probably in another video. I'm just showing you how I reload 38 Special. And you will see that's where your powder falls out. And... This is actually what you adjust your powder level, guys. Now, obviously, lefty, loosey, righty, tidy, you know, your left, your powder is going to come out. And then if you turn it right, it's going to screw it back in. So if you turn it left, you know, you'll be able to drop more powder. And if you turn it right, you're going to drop less powder, obviously, self-explanatory. So let me see if I can do this with one hand, guys. This is very difficult. All right, hang on. So I'm going to lift up with my finger. I'll drop it, boom, done. And let's see if you guys can see this. We have powder in there, awesome. So now we have powder in a prime cartridge. So you know what that means, it is time for seating of the projectile. We will set that right there. All right, so now we got our projectile. As I said before guys, this is not really an ideal projectile with this load. And I actually forgot, I am using the max um, charge in this, guys. It's not always recommended to use a max charge, but with this heavy projectile, 
I'm using the max load to get basically max effectiveness and max expansion out of these rounds. And I did test this, guys. Surprisingly, it expanded pretty good. I shot into the dirt and dug out the projectile, and it, it mashed it pretty good. I was actually expecting it not to not to do anything because it's such a heavy projectile with 38 special. Generally, you're going to use these in 357 Magnum. All right, this is a great round for 357, but 38 special do. Like I said, really can't be... Uh, Beggars can't be choosers with what's available. So, we're ready to seat the projectile. We're going to go ahead and shove it in there. We'll take our handy-dandy projectile and we'll whoop, drop it in there. Okay. Now, you're going to want to seat that in there somewhat straight. And now you are ready for your upstroke on your press. As I said before, you're going to raise or drop it, sorry. And you'll feel it seat. You'll stop. And then you're just going to go a little bit further. Bam. Okay, now the projectile is seated in the cartridge. Now you're going to do what you call your roll crimp. Okay, these dies, you can set up a roll crimp on them. And a crimp, in my opinion, is very important. Now, when you're crimping this with this, you don't... I'm going to leave this sitting here for a second. You guys don't want to crimp this too hard. And I have a perfectly good example, if I can find it. It's, oh, here it is. Of why you don't want to crimp so hard. Because I was watching a movie, guys, and I wasn't paying attention. And I smashed the living crap out of this, this round, this, this projectile. And it, it'll look like a wrinkly cat. If, uh, sorry, let's focus on the camera. It's terrible. It'll look like an old wrinkly cat if you smash it in there too bad. So, as I said before, take it easy on the crimp. We're just going to push down just a smidge. And you'll, you'll feel it. You guys, you'll feel it. Bam. That's it. And we have ourselves a... Complete 38 special cartridge. And that is it, guys. It's really simple. There's really nothing to it. And we'll go drop that in there with the rest of the pills. Bam. Which there's like, I don't know, a couple hundred of them in there. But, and you're going to repeat that, you know, over and over and over and over again until, you know, you get to your desired quantities. Um, but you guys don't have to use these projectiles. Obviously, this is just an example. There's way better options out there. As far as projectiles, powder, and brass goes, this is basically giving you the rundown on how to reload pistol calibers. And I will do a video on um, setting up these die sets because they're for a beginner reloader and you get one of these die sets, you're like, what the heck, how do I set this thing up? I will actually do a video on how to set up each individual die set that I currently own. Um, and I'll show you guys how to do that. But uh, thanks again, guys, for stopping by. Make sure you uh, mash that like and subscribe button for more content. And uh, hopefully see you guys soon.